Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, I'm John Hopper, the president of Greenwich Base Fiber Lumber Cancer Foundation and the co-chair of the Nordvir Cancer Coalition. I am happy to introduce a great agenda we have today for the second annual Greenwich Rare Disease Day. I'll just start off briefly to say Rare Disease Day is very important for the Fiber Lumber Cancer Foundation because our founder, a 28-year-old Tucker Davis, uh, lost his 18-month battle to fibromyalgia on Rare Disease Day in 2010. Uh, fibromyalgia is a rare cancer that affects 12 to 34-year-olds primarily uh, without any warning, and it has uh, an alarmingly uh, low survival rate, five-year survival rates. Uh, so we're on the mission to change that, to focus on research, awareness, education, and patient community building. Since Tucker's passing, we've funded over $8 million in research so I'm going to pass this on to uh, one of our patient ambassadors and one of our fighters, Mark Carls, who will tell a little bit about his story since he was on the Rare Disease Day last year and how the last year has been for him. Mark, welcome, and uh, please, uh, you're on. Thank you. Well, um, so navigating a rare disease during this COVID um, time, it's, it's been tough. And um, so I'm a patient of fibrolamellar hepatocellular carcinoma, the rare liver cancer that affects one in five million adolescents and young adults. It has nothing to do with liver abuse. And I'm so glad to have such a strong support system of family and friends that are helping me with this cancer battle. Currently, I'm on a hardcore uh, chemotherapy regimen. And today, this morning, I actually had my second round of radiation treatments up at Columbia Presbyterian Hospital. So I, I'm a little tired, but um, that's okay. Just bear with me. Now, the toughest part about being sick during this COVID um, pandemic has been loneliness. Now, since COVID, while being treated at Johns Hopkins down in Baltimore, Maryland, far, far away from home and far away from family and friends, is um, I, there's no visitors. And um, I was, I was having different appointments with my doctors, different appointments with researchers, different scans, and I had to go to all these alone. And, you know, I, I would show up to appointments usually um, in the past with an entourage. I would bring my family and friends. I'd show up to MSK with like 10 people and wait in the chemotherapy room and have them cheering me on uh, for chemotherapy. And, you know, so it, it was really, it was a big blow when I wasn't allowed to have visitors. And in, in The Lord of the Rings, a book that I found myself reading during the, um, my time at Johns Hopkins last summer, there was a fellowship. Nine started out on a journey to defeat the ring. Even though they were separated, Frodo always had Sam by his side to get to Mordor and destroy the ring. And I had to find my Sam during this pandemic. I had to navigate this brave new world. And what was my solution? FaceTime and Zoom. And so I taught my parents how to utilize Zoom back at the hotel while I was deciding which chemotherapy, which treatment to start at the hospital with my oncologist. And, you know, I even started taking advantage of having doctors and researchers in New York be on the Zoom calls as well. So, you know, it was actually almost better in a sense in, um, to get, you know, to pick the right treatment. Now, receiving bad news about that your cancer has grown or that the treatment you've been on for the past couple of months hasn't been working, and these side effects that you've been um, experiencing has just wasted your time, and you, you, the cancer is still growing, it really affects your mental health. And you know, sometimes, you know, you want someone in the room, like your family members, to hug you during these times, and that's not possible. And um, so, you know, the um, I can't thank like you know my medical team enough, and the brave nurses and and techs in the world that it really stepped their game up during the pandemic and really just gave me the support that I needed during this time, during these, I was in Columbia Presbyterian for um, two months this past summer with a surgery. And I was at Johns Hopkins for being treated for five weeks this past summer. Um, so it was, a, it was a tough summer. I didn't make it to the beach, but I, I learned how to cope with these new ways. And now the only thing that I really have to worry about is these nasal swabs, these damn nasal swabs they give me from the, the COVID test. But I got my first uh, dose of the vaccine yesterday and um, I'm excited. Um, I'm excited to go going forward and I'm utilizing Zoom. Thank you. Thank you, John. 
Mark, thank you for coming off of today's chemotherapy. Really, uh, you're a hero today for doing that, and we appreciate you sharing your story.